Hello, dear listeners, and welcome back to another episode of a Win is a Win podcast. I'm your host, Edgar Chapu. On today's episode, which, by the way, is being recorded on the eve of kickoff 2024, it's Wednesday, September 4th in the afternoon. Beautiful day, but because I love doing this show, I'm recording a podcast. So naturally, I'm inclined to talk about the NFL with some big storylines headed into the regular season, but I don't want to speak too generally. I feel like if I wanted to do a general predictions episode, I probably should have done that a few days ago, maybe even a week ago, whereas now that kickoff is a little over 24 hours away, I'd rather talk about some more specific stories uh, regarding uh, more particularly wide receivers, and there are four that I have in mind, and they're all they're all fantastic talents for the respective teams. They've earned their spurs throughout their time thus far in the NFL, and they all have had or are living contract situations. So I'm sure you can already guess some of the names I might be talking about on this episode. So let's let's have some fun with this and and dive in and see what these contracts mean for the players, for the teams, and maybe who made the right decisions. The four names that I'd like to take a few minutes to elaborate on are Justin Jefferson, who's with the Minnesota Vikings, CeeDee Lamb, who's with the Dallas Cowboys, Brendan Ayuk, who as of barely a week has confirmed that he'll remain in San Francisco with the 49ers. And at the specific time of this recording, it's not quite 4 p.m. Eastern Standard on Wednesday, September 4th, Jamar Chase, who is a Bengal but is sort of holding out because he wants an extension. Who knows, maybe by, by the time this episode goes up, which should also be today, maybe he he and Cincinnati have agreed on an appropriate extension of his contract. But right now, and I, and I literally checked in the five minutes before I hit record, no deal was done. So those are the four names I'd like to talk about. Who, which team made the right decision, maybe which player made the right decision, and unfortunately, maybe which player potentially made a right decision, but they just happened to find themselves in, in a bit of an unfortunate situation, at least in the short term. Uh, as for those latter qualities, I'm thinking most notably of Justin Jefferson in Minnesota. Now, his contract negotiations were settled quite early. They were settled in June, almost three months ago, maybe even three months ago to the day. Not quite. Uh, he signed for four years. Pretty much everybody will talk about signed for four years, notwithstanding Jamar Chase, because he's holding out. But he signed for four years, uh, $140 million total, uh, 88.743 of it fully guaranteed. It's an average annual value of $35 million per season. Uh, he is the officially the highest paid player. Uh, excuse me. He's the highest paid wide receiver. In the NFL, he will become a free agent in 2029. Obviously, the same goes for CeeDee Lamb and Brandon Ayuk since they all signed four-year deals and it's the summer of 2024. They will all become free agents in 2029. Jefferson's situation is uh, unfortunately intriguing. I mean, it's he's getting well paid and he certainly earned a lot of money. You know, he, he earned his bonus, uh, but he is in a bit of an unfortunate situation insofar as, I mean, Consider that he, he's entering his fifth season. He uh, arrived in the big leagues in 2020, the infamous pandemic year. He has never recorded, not even close, he's never recorded a sub-1,000 yard year. Uh, he's hit double digits and touchdowns once. He uh, got into the end zone 10 times in 2021, got into the end zone seven times in his rookie season, eight times in 2022. Now, 2023 was unfortunate for him insofar as 
his campaign was cut short due to an injury, and even before he suffered his injury, so did the, at the time, Vikings starting quarterback Kirk Cousins. Captain Kirk is now in Atlanta with the Falcons, but last year he was still in Minnesota, and Kirk Cousins went down. So not only was Justin Jefferson not getting the ball from someone who had helped him easily surpass 1,000 yards in each of his first first three seasons, uh, he himself went down. Now, why is that important for this season? Well, the Minnesota Vikings drafted a quarterback in the first round this year, J.J. McCarthy, who will not be playing this year because he got injured in training camp. So, uh, look, Justin Jefferson's going to get a lot of money. Good for him. He's a fantastic wide receiver. And maybe he'll still crack a 1,000 yards. I mean, Sam Darnold is the next man up. And I think, I think we know Sam Darnold. He is a known quantity. Uh, and Darnold's backup is, is Nick Mullins. But third stringer, usually fourth stringer. But obviously, in this case, third stringer is Brett Rippon, who I barely know. So not only was success in 2023 offset or marred by injuries but 20, so is 2024 and we haven't even reached kickoff Thursday so that's that's a little bit unfortunate you know Justin Jefferson is clearly one of the best wide receivers in the NFL I'm sure many people much smarter than myself in the domain of football can make a very convincing argument that he is the very best wide receiver. I, I'm sure you can make that argument. And this is going to be the second year in a row where, let's say, potentially, he's probably not having that much fun. <laughs> if we're being honest, incredibly well paid. But I'm sure even after you sign a contract like that, I surely, surely, Justin Jefferson is probably thinking, I'm very happy to be paid this much. I think I deserve it. But man, it would have been nice to be getting throws from uh, the quarterback everybody expected to be the starter. We know who Sam Darnold is. He's it's not great, but getting well paid. In rapid succession, uh, CeeDee Lamb in Dallas and Brandon Ayuk in San Francisco both renewed their stay, extended their stay with their respective franchises. CeeDee Lamb is undisputably the most potent weapon that the Cowboys have for years. A smidgen behind Justin Jefferson, he's making $136 million. Uh, a lot less fully guaranteed, though. Only six, quote only end quote sixty seven million fully guaranteed. Uh, so he's averaging thirty four million per season to Justin Jefferson's thirty five. He becomes a free agent in twenty twenty nine. Uh, in the twenty twenty three campaign, which generally speaking was quite good for the Cowboys, uh, CD Lamb was second league wide in receiving yards. He tallied 1,749, and he was third for touchdowns. He scored 12 of them. Excellent numbers. He's also had a great career so far, and he, he, he has been the most potent weapon that the Dallas Cowboys have when they choose to pass the ball. Congratulations to him. I also think, much like Justin Jefferson, I think C.D. Lamb has earned the contract that he signed, give or take, a fortnight ago. However, of all the players we're going to be talking about, and I know we haven't gotten to Ayuk or Jamar Chase, I suppose we can talk about Lamb and Ayuk together. Um, they would make an interesting comparison. Uh, hear me out. C.D. Lamb is staying in Dallas. I feel, and I'm not saying I have all the answers, I'm not saying I read all the stats and I understand every play, but even as a relatively serious NFL fan, as I like to think I am, 
I feel like everybody knows what the town, you know, we talked about Sam Darnold in the previous segment. Well, we, we, Darnold is a known quantity. I believe we can comfortably say the same regarding the Dallas Cowboys. They too are a known quantity, a good team, good team, clearly, clearly not a great team. Otherwise, they stop being one and done at home in playoff wildcard games uh, or you know, they'd get past the division around. What is it? Not since 1996? Have they reached the NFC Championship game? The conference final? That's a remarkable statistic for a franchise owned by a person who cannot stop boasting. I mean, bless Jerry Jones' heart. He's, he's made his money. He's been wildly successful and good on him. But the, the man is very boastful. And for the past... Uh, what not well not quite 30 the past 28 years uh, I mean, frankly not a whole lot has happened not a whole lot has happened and if the Dallas Cowboys do not make the conference championship game in January 2025 well we'll be talking about 29 years since they've reached that far Dak Prescott has I mean other than what the wild card game in Tampa Bay two seasons ago Dak Prescott's never played that well in the playoffs. I mean, granted, last year the defense stunk it up as well. Dak Prescott doesn't play on defense, and the Packers absolutely torched Dallas's secondary. That's not on Prescott, but he didn't play particularly well either, nor did he play particularly well the previous year in the divisional round in San Francisco, nor did he play particularly well two years ago, uh, or I guess suppose at this point three years ago, in the wild card round at home to the San Francisco 49ers, who we'll get to in a moment. You know, I, I wonder what might have happened. You know, <laughs> hindsight is twenty twenty, but speculation is fun. I wonder what might have happened if, for whatever reason, Stefan Diggs had not left the Buffalo Bills to go to the Houston Texans. Uh, in one of my day jobs... Uh, I had to write a little bit about the Houston Texans, and in my introduction to them, you know, since we're heading into week one, I alluded to the notion that when a team is as young as Houston, C.J. Stroud very young, Nico Hollins very young, uh, Tang Dell very young, but still very talented, it doesn't really matter that they're very talented. The fact of the matter is they're very young. Most of these players are entering their sophomore seasons, Ergo, they do not cost very much. Not yet. Not yet. But they do not cost very much. Hence, they could afford to acquire Stefan Diggs and pay him big money. I wonder what might have happened if negotiations between the Texans and the Bills had fallen through and Diggs was still in Buffalo. Would C.D. Lamb still be a cowboy? I get why you would want to stay. The team is still good. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe this is the Cowboys' year. Maybe. There is absolutely zilch that they've demonstrated over the past three to four seasons that gives us any reason to believe that they're making the Super Bowl this year because they've been good multiple times before. Multiple times. Still haven't played conference championship games since 1996. They are a known quality. They have a ceiling, and in particular, they have a ceiling with Dak Prescott as their quarterback. Dan Quinn is not there anymore. He coached up that defense to be one of the best in the league in 2023. Quinn is now in Washington as that club's head coach. So from a certain point of view, I can understand why CeeDee Lamb is still a Dallas Cowboy. From another point of view... I can't help but think, I wonder who he could have helped. I'm thinking about maybe the Texans. I'm thinking maybe maybe the Cardinals. You know, if Kyler Murray stays healthy, he has a long-term deal. I think there are a few teams he might have been able to help. I mean, he has the talent. Just give him a half-decent quarterback. He's going to score some touchdowns and get some first downs for you. That's a guarantee. It's just the fact that he's now... He's now very well paid and good on him, but he's getting well paid on this team where it's like, well, if they get eliminated in the wild card round or the divisional round, 
again, nobody's going to be surprised. And now the conversation bleeds into Brendan Ayuk, who uh, renewed his stay in San Francisco, I believe, just a few days after C.D. Lamb. It's another four-year deal. Obviously, he's going to become a free agent in 2029. A little bit less money in this case. He's making a total of $120 million. He also has significantly less fully guaranteed money. It's actually only 45. I can't believe I'm saying only, but $45 million fully guaranteed. So he's averaging $30 million per season. Nice chunk of change. Brandon Ayuk was seventh in the NFL in yards caught last season. He corralled for 1,364 yards. He was uh, he scored seven TDs, uh, which put them you know maybe a little bit uh, lower down the echelon. But the 49ers are also insanely equipped with guys like uh, Christian McCaffrey. Pardon me, uh, Debo Samuel. Uh, George Kittle, you know, tons, tons of guys. They have an art. They have a true arsenal. San Francisco is a true arsenal type team. His most prominent statistic was the fact that he was second in the NFL in yards per catch, a phenomenal seventeen point nine. That is a stunning, stunning figure. Seven, every time he caught the ball, on average, it was for seventeen point nine yards. That's crazy. Anyways, he obviously deserved that money. His summer was interesting, again, because he got his contract shortly after C.D. Lamb, and Lamb's was barely two weeks ago. I want to say two weeks ago, as of this recording. Um, the word on the street was that the New England Patriots had wanted to talk. They may have, in fact, talked with him. He reportedly quickly refused their advances, and subsequently... There were there were murmurs that a deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers loomed, hadn't been signed, wasn't official, but there were whispers in the wind suggesting that Brandon Ayuk was going to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. Now, granted, the Steelers, despite that what ails them these days, the Steelers are still a superior ensemble than the New England Patriots, but the Steelers themselves aren't great. In fact, Mike Tomlin, you know, he's a, he's a pro, he's a veteran coach, he knows how to talk to the media, and he knows what to say, but, you know, he hasn't necessarily said the most glowing things about Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, the two new guys, quote-unquote new guys in Pittsburgh. Russell Wilson is trying to uh, recharge his career after two ostensibly lost seasons in Denver, and Justin Fields is trying to, I guess, show that he can be a prominent starting quarterback after a few tumultuous uh, early career years in Chicago. Uh, but it's mostly a defensive team. It's mostly a running team. That is a franchise, historically, but up until today, that loves to get the offense going with the run game. I just don't know... Because Justin Fields, the jury's kind of... St Actually, I'm not even sure if the jury's out on Justin Fields. He just doesn't seem like a great passer. Maybe you can argue that the jury's still out as to whether Russell Wilson can rejuvenate his career. But again, that's still a question mark. Uh, I was quite surprised. And I was listening to some podcasts. I won't name any names because I'm, I'm not in the mood nor the business to throw other people under the bus. But I listen to a show or two where the hosts were quite quite convinced that a deal with Pittsburgh was imminent which I don't know I just thought it was very very funny it almost felt like um had that gone through the Steelers deal I mean it almost would have felt a bit like a Tyree kill to the Miami Dolphins. Now, you can also make the case that the Dolphins have been, you know, a decent playoff team the past couple of years, and that's true. But, you know, he's going to a team where nobody really knows if, if this regime, this uh, uh, McDaniel to a Tagovailoa regime is going to win a Super Bowl. And he left the Chiefs, with whom, A, he had won a Super Bowl, and B, have won two more Super Bowls since. Um, so I, I don't mean to disparage the Miami Dolphins. I acknowledge that they're a pretty decent team. But it would have been similar to that, where you're leaving this team that's so good in the 49ers to go to a team that maybe will be good with you, 
maybe will be patently average. Who knows? So I thought that was very strange. So unlike CD Lamb, where I'm, I'm, I'm happy he has money, but I'm a little bit sad where he's getting his money. I'm happy Ayuka staying in San Francisco. Now, you know, what's going to happen when Brock Purdy knocks on, you know, John Lynch's door and it's time for the franchise to pay up for Brock Purdy, who's been exceptional in his, what, one and a half? I know it's only one and a half seasons, but he, he's been exceptional. He really has been exceptional. And he's not even making a million dollars. Clearly, he needs to get paid. And now Brandon Ayuk has just gotten paid. So I don't know how they're going to juggle all that. How do you pay Samuel, McCarthy, Kittle, Ayuk, and then Brock Purdy? They're either someone's not sticking around or I don't know. It'll be interesting. It'll be very, very interesting. Next offseason is going to be one to look out for in San Francisco. But until that, until we need to cross that bridge, or rather until the 49ers need to cross that bridge, I like this deal. I think this is good. I think San Francisco is Ayuk's home. This is where he's the most efficient. He doesn't have to be the top, top, top number one guy because they have an absolutely ballistic running back and a wonderful number two wide receiver in Debo Samuel, who's kind of a semi-running back as well. I mean, Debo Samuel is a, a gadget. He's a James Bond gadget. So I think this is a good deal. I'm happy that you can stay. And lastly, the Jamar Chase situation in Cincinnati. Now, Jamar Chase is undisputably one of the best wide receivers in the NFL right now. Now, he's he, th this is not a poor man. Jamar Chase is not a beggar on the street. He's getting paid over seven million, <laughs> over seven million dollars per season. But obviously, when you look at the Jeffersons and the Lambs and the Ayukes who are making thirty million or more, and you take into consideration Jamar Chase's contributions during his first three seasons, I think it is, in the NFL, or, uh, yeah, three seasons. Um, you know, obviously, he needs to get paid more than $7.7 .7 million. I don't, think, I don't think that's up for debate. Um, no, no, <laughs> no person's sound of mind would debate that point. This guy clearly needs to get paid four to five times more. Uh, in fact, it would appear that he's been on record as saying he wants to make one penny more than Justin Jefferson. Not because he genuinely sees J Jefferson as a rival. They actually happen to be personal friends. Um, but I guess kind of because they're personal friends and he just saw the deal Jefferson got. He's, well, I'm just as good, if not better. I want more money, even if it's literally just one penny. I read that on CBS.com, their sports section before um, recording. And it wasn't a direct quote. It was like, oh, I, we think he said this, so who knows. But maybe. Uh, Jamar Chase will become a free agent in 2026. So this is a extension we're talking about. This is one of those things where he... Technically, he's supposed to be around for two more seasons. That being... Those being 2024 and 2025. Ergo, the free agency possibility in 2026. So we're talking about an extension... Uh, he has been holding out. He showed up to a few practices. I read today, Wednesday, September 4th, that he did show up for practice unless he changed his mind at the last minute. Of course, the big question is, does he play this weekend? <laughs> you know, it is week one. Sunday is literally four days away. And this guy's holding out for a contract extension. He is under contract. He's getting paid, but he wants an extension. I think one of the problems I see for the Bengals, you know, if I'm a Bengals supporter, is T. Higgins. Not because T. Higgins is a bad customer. He's a fantastic receiver. Uh, I'm a big T. Higgins fan. He becomes Higgins, that is, becomes a free agent in 2025. So this is T. Higgins' final year under contract with the Cincinnati Bengals. And he is currently getting $21.816 million fully guaranteed so significantly lower than the jefferson lamb and Ayuk, but of course it was a contract that was signed a little while ago inflation higher salary cap more productive wide receivers there's more money to spend obviously if t higgins renewed tomorrow morning it would be for 
surely seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars more than the twenty one point eight that he's making now. So what do you do with Jamar Chase? Because you know T. Higgins is going to want to at least discuss a contract renewal. I think my fear, and I actually heard this on a show this week, and it, it made sense to me. I mean, one of these guys is not on this team in 12 months from now. And since T. Higgins is the one who would enter free agency in 2025, uh, he's probably the more likely candidate to be wearing different colors at this time in a year from now. They, they The Bengals would probably extend Chase before they extend Higgins. As good as Higgins is, and he is quite good, Chase is simply better. So that seems to be the big problem right now in Cincinnati. There's, you know, there's going to have to be an extension for Chase, which is completely understandable. I, I, I don't think they would dare. I don't think they would dare not resign Chase. Although I'm sure they, they're, they're, they love paying him only seven point seven million a season these days, given his contributions. But there must be some um, worries in the front office that uh, T. Higgins might not be wearing orange and black striped uh, jerseys and helmets in the not-too-distant future. There you have it. That was another episode of a Win is a Win podcast. I have been your host, Edgar Shepard. This one was a little bit longer. I actually did not expect to be flirting with 30 minutes here. I try to keep these a little bit shorter, but we, we had a lot to talk about, and I thought these this quartet of wide receiver situations was quite interesting, especially since we are on the cusp of week one, and obviously some of these storylines are not complete. And they may hang over one of these franchises, uh, at least during the first few weeks of the regular season. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, we try to do these as regularly as possible. Check out the YouTube channel. Search for my name, Edgar Chaput, at 1793, or that is to say, at Edgar Chaput, 1793. Uh, or just Edgar, a win is a win. You should be able to find me. I'm on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, at Edgar Chaput 1983. Uh, by the way, Chaput is C-H-A-P-U-T. Uh, I'm also uh, somewhat active on Facebook. It's just my name, Edgar Chaput. Thanks so much for listening. We'll catch you very soon. And uh, take care, guys. Ciao.